the the companies who who makes uh, electricity they could run bitcoin they could run mining bitcoin they could yeah they could mine bitcoin and then switch on when they don't need energy when there is a low demand of uh, electricity and then switch off when there is uh, a high demand so, so with bitcoin energy basically we could create uh, energy plants everywhere and from wind from any kind of energy that, that you want from hydropower or anything that you want everywhere and we could still make it profitable. Hello, Marius. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thanks for coming on Bitkite. So I am I got to know you uh, through SR. We agreed to call him SR, Stupid Risks. It's easier. Yeah. And yeah, the name. No. <laughs> I remember RT once said that he doesn't like to say the name because it seems like a kind of insult. Uh, so we will go stick <laughs> to SR for him. Uh, I got to know you from him, but when I saw your profile, I noticed that I had seen a message from you somewhere uh, on the Bitcoin groups, including ours, uh, but I didn't find a way to search um, messages ba based on usernames, so I don't remember what your query was. So uh, let's start with this. Give us an introduction of yourself. So, uh, my name is Marius. I am uh, half French, half uh, Iranian. Um, I always uh, lived in, in France, but uh, yeah, I, I went just a while ago, uh, like to next now 10 years, I haven't been in Iran before I would go every year for a few weeks or months. And, and so I'm really bad. Uh, in like Iranian culture, I know the basics obviously, but I haven't been educated in. So unfortunately, I, I try little by little to get in, uh, but it takes uh, some time. And now my days are quite busy. So <laughs> yeah, just the point on this. And uh, what I do around Bitcoin. So basically, I just started to create a website um, where I would talk about. Uh, Bitcoin to introduce Bitcoin to uh, so what it is uh, that's called adopt uh, adoptable adopt block and um, I was uh, thinking with this website to create uh, so documentation to then uh, contact companies and to help them to uh, use Bitcoin how to secure wallets how to accept payments um and everything around it so i was like okay i have to convince them i'll have to convince uh, companies and what's the problem what is the problem uh that most companies have and so i wrote everything down and i was like okay so there is these problems the main one was uh, that bitcoin is energy consuming so i made lots of research for a few months, maybe three or four months about it. Then I wrote a quite long paper about it and that uh, explained how Bitcoin consume, why and why is it not that complicated. And so this was my entrance, like the, my first step in writing content about Bitcoin. And then uh, little by little, I got introduced to to people, to companies. And now I work with the, uh, the with Cryptost, which is the French, uh, the crypto French media the the main one the, the most famous at least and uh, now I am also working with the link the the wallet uh, who is built by Galo Galo uh, maybe you know it as Bitcoin Beach Wallet which was the the wallet created for uh, the community in El Salvador El Salvador yeah yeah so I have been writing for them and just yesterday the my first my first article uh, was published. Uh, on on their website just just yesterday, so it's just really recent. But now it makes uh, around yeah eight nine months. I'm writing. I'm working with Cryptost, and so if I have been introduced to you, it's mostly because I am writing a, 
now uh, so a report documentation we were talking about this i don't really know how to call it but uh yeah a report about bitcoin adoption in iran and so if you heard about me in the group or if you remember me in the groups it's because at the beginning i just sent messages in lots of um uh, groups uh, i sent dms to lots of people to try to contact to have uh, some some people who could talk about how it is and who could testify and tell me more about uh, how it is so I, I could do the best uh, the best report and uh yeah so basically this is who I am and why I am here <laughs> yeah well, when you mentioned the challenges um in front of companies who want to uh, you know adopt bitcoin um, I expected the first to be the volatility because I have friends who use crypto in Iran and they prefer Tether on different networks because they know they know dollar. They've been raised knowing the value of dollar in real terms. And I expected that to be the first challenge. Mm, on which order of the list is it for the companies who would like to adopt Bitcoin? But they say that oh it is too volatile is it a big concern for them or not so i couldn't tell you exactly how it is because uh, i haven't contacted a lot of them uh, but basically the volatility is not the main one uh, the main problem that they have because there is different ways to accept bitcoin uh, with the applications like open node for example you can accept bitcoin uh, or on chain or lightning and you can directly uh, exchange this Bitcoin, this Bitcoin for fiat currencies, for euros, USD, and how you want. So you can say, okay, so uh, I don't know, I'm a bar, I'm selling beers. My beers, go, I sell it for, let's say, six euros. In the six euros, uh, I pay uh, three euro of charges, so 50%. So let's say every time that someone pays in Bitcoin, then I will exchange 50% of what I receive in Bitcoin. So for them, they would always get their uh, charges paid and then they would have the the, the more value uh, the, the profits will be in bitcoin and then we'll be able to take pro uh, value in the time so for me this is not really a problem for that and it doesn't appear to be uh, according to the to the to the companies who accept it and um also it's a uh, now problem the bitcoin's volatility is a now problem because in 10 years bitcoin will be I hope more uh, more valued, so the the price will be less volatile. And even now, we can see that from five years ago, uh, Bitcoin was more volatile, and now it's still lesser. So it's for me, it's a temporary problem, and so that's why it was not the top of my list. And and yeah, basically. <laughs> and about your report about Iran. Uh, how many people did you manage to reach? And I believe since you speak English and French uh, and you didn't speak Persian, there was a language barrier. How difficult was it to reach the community and how successful were you? So it was yeah quite hard because, uh, as I mentioned, I tried to contact people on social medias and in the Telegram groups. And most of the people I contacted uh, just all didn't answer it or in the groups some said that i was some kind of government spy or i don't know so <laughs> it must be the beard yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe probably but um it was at the same time difficult because i was thinking to even like give up on this idea because i couldn't have uh much uh uh, feedbacks from people and I was like okay why why would I write about Bitcoin if I have uh, no experience to share about how it is there like it would be useless so I still tried to contact people through emails through things and uh, to, to try to show them what I already did so they can trust me so I have been uh, able to to contact a, a few people that helped me and um, one who even uh uh, translated my some of my questions in uh, in Persian to 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 send to to people so they can answer uh, freely, and 
So uh, until now, I have I think I think uh, around twelve or thirteen uh, people who uh, answered me and what, that I will use their uh, their uh, testimony in in the in the doc. What questions were included in this survey? So I, I there were uh first uh, the, I I just sent like a few questions just uh, for simple. Uh, it's like how did you heard about Bitcoin, how you use it, uh, how, uh, uh, like why you why you why you have it, like uh, what do you think about it in general, and uh, also, um, I don't remember exactly, but it, it was like, uh, wait, I I can show you I uh, show you or just go through the questions. So yeah, first question it was. Um, what kind of censorship did you face? So I was thinking about in general how it is with the with the government. Uh, how is it impacting you, your life, people around you? Then, uh, how did you heard about uh, Bitcoin? Why did you choose to use Bitcoin? Um, and is there any other options that you can use uh, instead of Bitcoin? Uh, if yes, uh, do you use it too? And if not, why you don't use it? Uh, and third question, it was, uh, uh, how do you actually use it? And um, is there a lot of shops who accept uh, Bitcoin uh, payments? And then the, the fourth question, I think, because there doesn't seem complete. It was about, uh, what do you think about uh, Iran and the future? Uh, like its future, economical future and um, yeah, like, are you optimistic about uh, the politics, about uh, the government, will it change and everything just to, to have a short uh, overview? Um, because uh, even if I am concerned about the, all this, I'm quite stranger, a stranger for a stranger for Iranians. So I cannot really uh, think like from my point of view, of course, everything is bad. Everything is going wrong. But maybe people there had other opinions. So yeah, it was important to to get to that. Yeah. Um, I know that when we start a kind of research or a kind of study, we have some expectations in the beginning and then we find some findings, we encounter some findings that prove otherwise and surprise us. Uh, what results did you find surprising? Um, I think it was... The most surprising is how much people would need it because, of course, like from medias, I hear that uh, there is internet cuts, that there is censorship controls. It's not possible. Uh, like there is a international banking system uh, who is uh, prohibited, like it's not usable for Iranians. So it's not possible to send money uh, in other countries or even just to buy stuff in, in, other, in other countries. And so I was really uh, not shook, but surprised about how much uh, uh, this censorship was uh, effective and and how much Bitcoin even could be useful. Um, because I knew that it could be useful in this kind of situation, but I didn't know that it, it, it would be that much. And yeah, uh, hearing uh, and reading people talking about it was uh, uh, really interesting and it was more than what I, I would expect. And uh, from what I understand, you mean the international censorship rather than the inside the government, uh, inside the Iran censorship? You mean being cut off from the international banking system? I mean, and the government um, itself has a huge role to play there. Um, and that has caused them being cut off from the rest of the world. Uh, yeah. So what kind of censorship you are exactly talking about? About all of them, <laughs> that's the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mm -hmm. will so in the in the document, uh, I'm I'm writing. I will talk about uh, obviously obviously the censorship that is uh, made by the government, uh, how it's impacting people's life, but also how the U.S. sanctions sanctions and boycotts uh, are impacting uh, uh, the, go the the economy and and people's life uh, more precisely. So yeah, I will try to go deep in the subject but not to go too much in the details because it's not really relevant for um 
for, for the doc and for what I want to show around Bitcoin adoption, but still I will talk about it and just give a, uh, um, a, a view about how it is and how it's impacting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said that you were in Iran about 10 years ago and it was already bad. I left maybe three years after that. And I've, I've been struggling with the censorship from inside and outside all the time. Um, yeah, and Bitcoin was a kind of freedom for me that I can get money without without uh, having to have a bank account with my own country or some other countries abroad. Uh, just and, and with only 12 words, I could uh, could secure it. The thing is that in Iran, everything that is not censored by the government is uh, sa sanctioned by the U.S. So you are left with a very limited number of choices. The situation is really bad. Have you felt any of that in your short visits uh, to Iran? Yeah, like uh, I was when I was there, I was quite young and I couldn't uh, really... Like I knew what was happening and I knew why, because uh, everyone around me would explain to me, but I couldn't uh, understand fully uh, because I did I was not uh, mature enough for that. And so I understood more in the time and more when I, I would learn about the, the news and everything. But um, yeah, the, the I, I, I would not feel it so much for me. It would be like almost like a game because I was really yeah i was quite young uh, like a teenager so it was everything everything was simple for me because everyone around me would take it as a joke uh, but basically everything is is that is prohibited in in iran i still saw it like alcohol drugs music and everything it's, it's even if it's prohibited it's almost impossible to not see it and yeah <laughs> Yeah, it it finds a way, but with much higher cost and less quality. Definitely, there are unfortunately um, people who lose their lives because of the alcohol that is uh, produced underground and has the wrong content of alcohol. Uh, yeah, so there are a lot of risks involved with it. Uh, what was your journey into Bitcoin like? Um, you mean how I learned about it? Yes. Okay, so um, at first I got involved in some kind of uh, online academy about economy in general. It was more about uh, forex trading. And I was there for uh, a few months and I learned about economy, about how, it, how everything works. So uh, I learned for the first time about... Uh, central banks about how everything works about how the currencies works and i got really involved like interested about it and little by little i heard about bitcoin about what it is and for me at the beginning it just sound like uh, something interesting but not so much and maybe i'll make some research later and uh, one day I, I i was watching a a video from a famous youtuber that uh, i think at this time he had around 2 million followers and he made the video about cryptos about blockchain in general and um, so speaking about bitcoin too obviously with another youtuber that is spe specialized in cryptos and so it's was the first time i would understand what bitcoin is how the blockchain works at least uh, yeah how how it works uh, in the in the, in in general and uh, and, and then I yeah, it just like it was the first time I would understand what it is, and then little by little I would make some research uh, about it on YouTube mostly, but uh, um, yeah, and then th there were this um this uh main uh, it's probably the the first uh, the the main YouTube channel that talks about Bitcoin, but it's only Bitcoin. It's not just crypto in general. It's only Bitcoin, uh, which is called Decouv Bitcoin, which is which means uh, discover Bitcoin. Um, and they, they, so they just dive into Bitcoin and explain what it is, uh, in different levels for beginners and for, uh, intermediaries and 
for event experts and not experts, but yeah, like for people who really understand good. So it's, it's like when I just discovered it, I was like, okay, I'll watch everything that I can understand. And, and little by little, I got more deep in the, in the rabbit hole, like we can call, call it. And, and then I choose to, <laughs> to write my own content, and you know, the next, the following steps. Yeah, the rest is becoming history. Yeah, <laughs> about the energy consumption of Bitcoin, what are your point, uh, points of view? Because, you know, some people like Seyfeddin are like, you know, it consumes a lot of energy, but it is worth it. But there are some other people, most pe mostly from the mining camp, people who are miners and they want to have better relationship with the governing bodies. So they say that Bitcoin drives uh, um, drives you towards uh, renewable energies and cleaner energies. Uh, which point of view do you take here? Or if it is nuanced, different from that, I am glad to hear about it. Um, for me, the Bitcoin mining will be uh, useful and is uh, is useful already, but will be even more in the time in the energy industry in general. It's not just, I think we shouldn't hope that Bitcoin becomes uh, only mined with green energy. Of course, it could be really good, but I think it's not the only issue. Uh, it's the only possibility and it would be, and Bitcoin would be really useful in the uh, fossil energy in gas, in uh, oil and everything, and nuclear, and all the type of energy, basically. Why? Um, because Bitcoin is the only energy, the only uh, industry, sorry, that you can run and switch off at any time. And uh, um, so in, in, in a grid, in electricity grid, uh, so with the, the electricity, the, 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 the network, kind of, if we can call it, um, there is an amount of electricity that we need uh, that, so I will not show you. So for, for the podcast, it would be useless, but it makes some kind of curve like a down, up and down because we use it not a lot in the, not a lot of energy during the night. And we use more during the day because everybody's working. Everybody is making uh, like, you know, making food, cooking, uh, watching videos, everything. And in, in, in back at night, it goes uh, lower. So it makes, huge uh, uh down uh need of uh, like um, decreasing of uh, energy i don't know how to say that sorry my english is not perfect and um maybe you will see uh, decrease the need for electricity um, it, it decreases during the day right that's what you mean yeah yeah uh, exactly. sorry decreases yeah, no, during it's... the night uh but increases during the day because everyone is active they are using their washing machine their yeah uh, stove exactly yeah their devices yeah so it's basically if we make a, a huge draft of uh energy consumption is this but uh to create energy to to be able to give energy to everyone then we have so when i would say we it's the energy industry have to produce enough energy for everybody at the correct time if we have too much energy during the night uh, when people don't use it, then it's useless. So we have to be able to reduce uh, the energy that we, we produce uh, during the night and then to, to produce more during the day for the people. Uh, so it would be, it, it is quite difficult. It's not difficult with uh, fossil energy like uh, uh, oil, gas, uh, and, and uh, coal and everything because we can, manage how much energy we put, how much we burn to create ele uh, electricity. But with the renewable uh, energy and nuclear, it's also difficult. We cannot so much uh, change the, uh, the the production of energy. So Bitcoin will is being like is making able the in industry to have a flat uh, consumption of energy. So the the companies who who makes uh, electricity they could run bitcoin they could run mining bitcoin they could yeah they could mine bitcoin and then switch on when they don't need energy when there is a low demand of uh, electricity and then switch off when there is uh, a high demand so, so with bitcoin energy basically we could create 
uh, energy plants everywhere and from wind, from any kind of energy that, that you want from hydropower, anything that you want everywhere. And we could still make it profitable. We could still uh, make these plants creating money and earning money everywhere. And yeah, so it's just too much. Uh, I don't know, it's it's the perfect tool to make to adapt the the energy consumption to to uh, the energy production to the energy consumption and and bitcoin is the only energy uh, on industry that can do that because uh there's just no no other if you think about uh, this uh, uh amazon servers like cloud uh, computing and everything uh, and all the cloud storage and everything uh, this needs to be in some kind of place that we can have uh, a good maintenance, uh, a good internet connection, and uh, and also a lot of energy. Uh, if you think about any factory, it's not possible because we need people to to bring. Uh, if we think about the, this uh, uh, silver factory, uh, the the hovens, I don't know how to. Yeah, I think it's hovens needs to be heated uh, all the time to melt the the the. The silver and to be able to produce something from the silver but with bitcoin you can switch it off anytime switch it on anytime you don't need a fancy like a fast uh, internet connection i think just with 3g it would be enough or just with satellite uh, internet uh, it, it would work and just energy <laughs> so yeah, it's just the perfect industry to do that and to yeah and one of the key things that you mentioned is that you can turn it off at any time you see that it is not um profitable because the energy yeah. at that time is scarce and too expensive so that that that's a key component in making it uh making it so and just i i would like to uh say because maybe my explanation were not so clear uh, that uh, people can go on my website to read the document I wrote about it, where everything is uh, dived and explained uh, more clearly. So, uh, so if you if you want uh, to to read about it and to learn more about it, then um, go on adoptblock.com. So adopt like in English, in English, uh, adoptblock.com. It's on your shirt. You can show it. Yeah. Ah, there will be the the camera. Okay. So it's like that, just without the A. Mm -hmm. I don't see it's in reverse, just without the A, sorry. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, .com. Yeah, and then you will see a document that is called Orange is the, is the New Green. Uh, so basically it's this document that is yeah. a bit long to read, but it go deep in the in the subject. And definitely I will uh, put your link in the, in the uh, descriptions so uh, the okay. audience can yeah. follow it. Mm. I guess uh, you started approaching companies uh, rather recently. Probably it's less than a year from my understanding. Yeah, I tried, but it was not really successful. Um, and then I got involved in uh, journalism, kind of, if we can say it like that. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, do you, are you aware of the, the reaction of the readers to your article about Bitcoin and energy consumption? Uh, I had some feedbacks and most people were uh, saying that it was really interesting and that they couldn't see it, that, that they wouldn't see it like that before because when you just listen to uh, traditional medias, then you just hear that Bitcoin is consuming too much and it's killing the, the planet. And but I'm directly answering to that. Uh, the my introduction is about that is about how media talk about this, and yeah. <laughs> so it, it's just for for most of the people they are mostly surprised about uh, how it's uh, how it is in reality, and why is it not a, a problem, and yeah. Um, we heard about your journey into Bitcoin. And uh, what I want to know is why Bitcoin? And what's the superiority of Bitcoin over the other cryptocurrencies from your point of view? Um, so the, the thing is, 
and if we if we talk about technical way uh, there is crypt other cryptos that are more efficient um in terms of scalability um yeah in general there is crypto like for example litecoin who is basically just a copy of bitcoin but uh, who is faster so we could think that bitcoin is better uh, because of this but in reality it is not because bitcoin has the the, the, the benefits of being the first and being the most uh, known now and also to be the most uh, resilient which is which means that everybody uh, trust bitcoin because of what it is because it shows already in the past that it was strong and that it continued to be and uh, yeah so if you want to compare about other cryptos so i'm not really obscure or against uh, altcoins uh, like ethereum many other i personally have some of them but the problem of uh, this market is that people who invest don't know about what they are investing they just think it's like oh you just buy and then you're rich in in one year but it's not like that it's more complicated uh, crypto market is really really volatile bitcoin is really volatile but crypto market is even more and uh, if you buy something you never have the, the 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 you can never be sure that it will really work and yeah for me it's just uh um startup market uh that is open to everyone really easy and uh so it's really dangerous <laughs> for that but bitcoin for me it's really different because it's uh more stable asset um in terms of adoption um yeah if you take back if you don't think about the the, the price the, the 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 adoption of bitcoin is um growing through the time and never going down even when the price is going down there is still more people who get involved in bitcoin and yeah <laughs> I, I, if i could talk hours about that but it won't be relevant i think well, we heard about the things uh, you've done and what's next for marius so what's next first the, the this document uh, about iranian adoption uh, i hope i could finish it uh, at least finish writing uh, before end of January and hope being published for February. Um, this is my the main goal I have these days. I don't think about anything else uh, except this. And I'm still working with cryptos. Uh, that, yeah, and now with Blink. So if you don't speak French, uh, you can still uh, maybe get interested about um, but what, but what I write for Blink, and also on my website uh, I write uh, lots of things. So next steps is making more content. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, it's not a fancy, uh, a fancy fancy plan, but yeah, that that's what makes me getting up every morning is to to write stuff about Bitcoin and making people using it more or just know more about it. And um, could you tell us um, how people can follow your work apart from, uh, I mean, you can repeat the name of the website so that we have everything here and also your Twitter handles or probably your non master uh, Where can people find you in general? Yeah, so if you want to just, uh, if you don't care about me and you just care about what I'm writing, of course, my website. So adoptblock.com uh, and if you want to share some opinions with me, then maybe Twitter would be the best place. And so it's a bit tricky to to pronounce. I'll try to 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 remember. So it's uh, at A A B. Uh, so the first A is in capital letter. The B is in capital letter, and it's uh, dash Marius with M capital letter. Does it matter? It's a bit tricky to, to pronounce, yeah. I think it I doesn't think it matters, matter. no? The... On Twitter? It doesn't. It shouldn't. Okay, so AAB dash mm -hmm. uh, matters. I will try I... it. I will try to see <laughs> if uh, it matters, but it should not. And yeah, thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to more conversations together. Great, yeah. Thank you very much for, for this interview. It was interesting to have your questions and to think about all these 